am Holly Fisher, and I'm here with my colleagues, Ashley Hogan and Cameron Johnson, and we're having a conversation about how we use creativity in the classroom and in our own personal work, how we define creativity, and we discovered an overlap that we have where we all use creative journaling in some way, either visual journaling, illustration as a brainstorming technique to problem solve. So how would you define creativity in either in the academic context and personal context or when talking to a student who's maybe intimidated by being creative? I think sometimes it can start from following your gut and trusting your mind to kind of take you to interesting places. So I try to emphasize to students in the, in the early stages of writing, what you're writing right now is generative. Just for you, nobody's gonna read it. It's just for you to kind of think on the page and that means that you want to try not to censor yourself. You don't want to worry about things like spelling and word choice. Um, you just want to kind of follow your mind, see where it goes. So I don't know if that's a definition of creativity, but it's kind of an access point. Um, my idea of creativity comes as opposed to what people talk about when they say creativity because I think creativity comes from structure. Um, I think sometimes we present it as this thing, this this free thing that just kind of happens to everybody, but I feel like um, uh, you have to have some kind of structure in order to be creative. Because mm -hmm. um, I know for me, I've noticed, and Holly, it's funny, I took I took your class and it was hard for, I could see people having a hard time being creative because they didn't even know what clay could do. Right. Right. For me, because I've taken it and I've, you know, I've had some experience with it, when you started talking, things just started flowing out, you know, but it was mainly because I had the practical sense of form building, you know, so it was interesting seeing like that foundation, yeah, foundation. Yeah. Incredible. So I think, I think we, we over, we overestimate how much, how important that is. Right. So I think whether you're doing art and you need to know, know about line, shape, value, texture, or if you're doing words, you need to know about verbs, adjectives, nouns, mm -hmm. like we, we, we don't look at that as creative, right? Or um, I have a quick story about my wife who we go all the time and she's like, can you go downstairs and cook something? And I'm like, okay, we don't have anything. And then she'll go down there and she'll just start making a full course meal. And I'm like, <laughs> what just happened? How you know, you yeah, that? but it's like, she knows what bacon, soda, and flour can do. She knows what, you know, these things that to me look like individual items. Right. She knows how, and I think it's the same thing with art. And I try to keep that in mind when I'm teaching. It's like, until you get that, that structure, it's hard to let things just kind of flow out of mm -hmm. you. And I think, um, you know, it's, even artists like Picasso, right? He didn't start off doing what we consider you know, the, the abstract or the, you right. know, the kind of cubism. He started off being a very structured artist and then he broke that, you know, once he understood what it was. And so for me, creativity comes from repetition. It comes from, from structure. It comes from some type of a, a base mm -hmm. and then allowing yourself to, you know, analyze and, and, and manipulate that base. And so, um, I don't know, I, I really, I, I, sometimes I think they find that as not being creative, but I'm like, those, those uh, practice things that you're doing, journaling and things like that, um, doing color samples. To me, I love doing color samples because it's like I begin to see color differently. And so I think I tell students all the time, for you to become creative, you really need to dive into understanding what the, what the material or the, you know, the science, what, what you're working with, or, you know, the experiment. So. Absolutely. I love that, and I think that's so great for our students to hear too. That's why we have them take the foundation yeah, like classes. Yeah. That's why those are so important. Yeah. One thing I hear from students a lot in those early classes, maybe those who haven't had a lot of art experiences, they say, I'm not creative, mm -hmm. I'm not an artist, I can't do this. And I try to tell all of my students, regardless of their level, that creativity isn't just about making a right. final product with right. your hands. It's about yeah. a way of thinking. Mm. It's about the way of problem solving. It's experimentation. It's trial and error. It's failure. Yeah. That they have to be comfortable failing. Yeah. And that right. those mistakes in that foundational process, like what you were talking about, Cameron, are what lead them to eventually be able to make something out of baking soda and flour. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I tell my students, there is never a wasted word or a wasted page. Mm -hmm. If That's you true. end up cutting out a whole mm -hmm. scene, it doesn't mean that that scene didn't take you somewhere and give something to that story. Even if you don't end up using it, it got you somewhere with the character or somewhere in the story, or just your, it helped deepen your understanding of the story or the character in a way you might not even be aware. So yeah. don't feel like if you have to take something out, though that was a waste. Yeah. Right. I can't believe I wrote that yeah, whole thing. Yeah, and I know I have a, one of my favorite stories. When I first started teaching, um, I was doing all only foundation courses, and um, I was teaching a drawing class, and of course, 
most of the students were non-majors. And the same thing, they were like, I'm not creative, I can't draw. And so what I would do is I would give them a large sheet, the, probably the biggest piece of newsprint I could find, which at the time was like a 24 by 36. And I would tell them to write their name, right? And the first thing they would always do, and you probably can guess, they would put their name in the top right corner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we would turn the paper around. I'm like, first of all, I gave you a 24 by 36 piece of paper and you wrote your name an inch tall. <laughs> But the funny thing that I always think about, and I'll never forget the student, he put Corbin, and I never forget Corbin, he, I don't remember his last name, but he put Corbin the size of the whole page. So as soon as we turned the paper off, everybody around, everybody had their small name, he was like, my name is Corbin. And he said it was such authority, and I just could not stop laughing, and they didn't get it, but I'm like, he thought outside of the box. And you could tell a lot by his personality, because A, I mean, he was a little arrogant, but, <laughs> but it was cool to me that he thought, okay, I'm gonna use this whole page. Mm -hmm. And I told him, like, that's creativity. Like, you, you thought that I wanted you to do one thing, but I never gave you that parameter. So really, mm -hmm. I think even with students, they put that parameter around themselves that I'm not creative, but it's like, you could have wrote, you know, some students would put hearts as the dot on the eye, or some students would put their name in cursive. Right, uh, it's know. innovative yeah, thinking exactly. that equals creativity. It's pushing against the rules and against the norm and not just trying to follow the status quo. Right, and not trying to guess what somebody wants you to do. Exactly. Oh, that's exactly. a great way, that's to, put way to put it. Yeah, and I think that's something that they do often. They try to, what am I supposed to do? And I think that's the first kind of thing that, not say kills, but it hinders a creativity. Right. It's like, <laughs> Think about what the parameters are and then think about what the possibilities are, right? So. Right, and that lines up with my telling my students that voice in your head that tells you that's bad and wrong, that's the wrong word, that the com that comma doesn't go there. I was like, just knock that thing off your shoulder when you are generating material. That is for much, much later yeah. in the process. And it takes some time. I mean, I still struggle with that yeah. critic standing on my shoulder, and it's not easy to do, but it, if students can sort of forget about what it's supposed to be. Right. It's, um, they kind of learn not to hold back as much yeah. or worry as much about what, what the rules are. So how did you hone in on what inspired you and how you were the most creative? What area are you the most creative? Well, that's, that's interesting. I discovered clay here at Meredith, actually. I, I came to Meredith College planning on being a painter, um, loved painting, and that's what I had done as a younger person, that's what I had the most experience in. But when I came across clay, I, there were so many things about it. One of the things was how hard it was, how much failure I had, how challenging it was. And I was really drawn to that challenge, the fact that I did fail so many times early on. And it made me just hungry. It made me really want mm -hmm. to like, I will figure this out. And it doesn't matter how many times I fail. And that's, I try to pass that on to the students too. You might have to rebuild something multiple times before you get something that's strong, but it's that, that rule of 10,000 hours mm -hmm. that you need to invest 10,000 hours into something to become really good at it. And for me, clay was the thing that I, I struggled the most to master. I, master is even the wrong word. I'm so far from that, but I, it's still the most challenging medium I've ever worked with, while also being the most immediate and expressive medium, where it's all about touch, and it responds to your touch, and it responds to the environment. It responds to the moisture, to the air quality. It's alive. It's organic. It's full of microorganisms. I, I just... I like being a co-creator with that material. That is great. How about you? I grew up reading, 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 and I just always told stories. I used to draw stories for my little sister when we were little. We would make up all these stories and she would sit and just watch me draw them out. And um, I had a teacher in first grade who handed me a notebook and said, you're a writer, you're really good at this. Um, and that was about it. When somebody told me, yeah. that's who you that's are, you're really good at that. Um, that I, affirmation is yes. really valuable. Absolutely. Yeah. Just for somebody to say to me, do this, yeah. you know, keep doing this. Um, and, you know, there are definitely times in my life that I write more. Um, but from, from the time I was a little girl writing, I've just always been, I, I, I always knew that I wanted to be a writer. It was kind of coming to teaching that I didn't expect sure. how much I would yeah. love teaching and working with students and reading their work. And I think that's true for all of us. Yes. None of us planned yeah. on being teachers. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Cameron, how did you choose your medium, especially since you work with so many of them? Yeah, I guess for me, I always go back to drawing and painting. Like I always, and I think it was almost to what you were saying, like that that instant um, response. Mm -hmm. And then when I see things, I see lines, I see construction, I see, see form and shape. Um, and so I think to me, building things with lines have always been really interesting and fascinating. I remember just even reading Rainbow when they taught me how to do perspective, right? I never forget that, but um, they were doing stairs. And I was like, I felt like I could walk down the stairs. I'm like, I know it's not real, but my mind believes it to be mm -hmm. real. And so I think that, that whimsical magic of creating a space um, I think it's the same way like creating a world when you write, right? Right, so it's the same I was think, just thinking yeah. that. It is yeah. walking into another, yes. a, a created space. Yeah. I love that. And that's where narrative comes back to all of these um, things we're talking about as well. Yes, it does, mm -hmm. yes. All right, and just reassuring them that there's not one way to be a writer. There's not one way to be a sculptor, one way to be an artist, that you can do something that has never been done before. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, your way of doing it is the way you should do it. Right. Well, we all have a personality, right? And I think, as, especially in college, um, to me, I think in, in, when you're, in, you're um, in high school, middle school, you're forming who you are. In college, I think, to me, is really kind of polishing it up a little bit. So mm -hmm. you, hopefully, I, I think with my students, I try to tell them that you know, we're, we're not forming you into something you're not. We're almost just helping you understand who you are. Right. And so I think that, that's the fun thing about this level to me is that people become, usually when they leave, you can see them you know, standing up a little bit more you know, straight. And, having a better sense of understanding who they are as individuals and, and what they can bring, hopefully bring to the world. And so um, I think creativity does that for you. It gives you that sense of empowerment. So that's like, I can take on different challenges, whether it's creative thinking or actually making things with your hands. So yeah. Oh, I just love what you said about when you came to college thinking you were gonna be a painter. That happens so often yeah. in college that you take a class or you explore a subject that you never even knew that you had an interest in and just kind of being open to those new experiences and you know, understanding that college may nudge you in directions you didn't think you were gonna go. And to me, that was what was so exciting mm -hmm. about college. Um, just finding new things that I had never known about that were interesting and that I were, was passionate about. Yeah, but I hope, I think one thing I hope people take away from this is just the idea that creativity can be implied at different places. I agree with that so much, mm -hmm. and that that creative thinking that they learn in school through these classes that we teach, right, it might address right. it more specifically, can apply to all of their courses in any future job they have. Right. It doesn't have to be a job in a traditional creative field right, right. for them to be using that creative thinking right. that they've all, learned. All jobs need creative thinkers. All jobs need creative thinkers. Yes. So if there's a student out there right now who might be looking for a prompt from us, like how could I explore my own creativity? What can I be doing in the weeks leading up to the semester? How can I be creative? Do you have any advice that you would give them? Any suggestions? I mean, I, I was thinking as both of you were talking about how we maybe have used some creativity to cope with change and the trans transition to college is mm -hmm can be challenging and especially right now where we are um, and the, the changes that we may face in, in the fall, I think preparing yourself for that experience and what you're feeling, reflection, um, I mean journaling is a, is a great way to sort of think through your feelings. Yeah, I think the whole thing with context, right? I mean, right now with COVID-19, with you know the whole um, Black Lives Matter and the whole protest and things like that, there's so much um, context, whether it's fear, whether it's frustration, wherever you are on that spectrum, um, that you can just, I would say, use that. So I, would, I wouldn't waste this, this climate that we're in right now. Um, I think some people feel helpless, but it's like, this is the best time to be creative because yes. you know, it's an extreme emotion, right? And to me, that's where I feel the most creative is when there is, you know, not when things are you know, kind of melancholy, but when you have these extreme highs and lows. Mm -hmm. And so as you're journaling, um, turn it, I think to me, turn those words into images if you're going to be a visual person. So I think yeah, maybe take one word, as you were mentioning, or one, mm -hmm. even a letter, right? Or take an acronym and try to figure out how you can associate images to that. And I think that'll get the ball rolling. So it's a daily process too. So it helps build those muscles. Well that reminds me of a, a project that I did with my students when we transitioned mid-semester this last spring from being in class to being online. I had my students combine what you two were just suggesting. I had them journal every day something that they felt positive or grateful about, hopeful for, and something that was giving them anxiety mm -hmm. or fear. And then I challenged them to find an origami shape that they could fold that little note that they wrote to themselves in. And mm -hmm. how can they make that 
flat two-dimensional surface into a three-dimensional shape that encapsulates the message in the note. Yeah. And there's so many good tutorials online for origami yeah. folding. I think it's really accessible. Mm -hmm. And it's so transformative to take something flat and create a form out of it. There's problem solving in that. And then you hide that little note or you you memorialize that little note in that shape. Mm -hmm. And it's in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then that's, that's, right. that's so interesting because in writing, that's the struggle, taking a feeling and making it an image. Yeah. Because it's hard for us to relate. If somebody says, I feel angry, we can understand that word, but we don't feel that anger. Right, right. But you paint about anger or you, you have a sculpture of, that is about that feeling. Um, same thing in writing. You, you need to create that feeling in the person who's reading your work. So yeah. that's an interesting connection. That's the part that I really try to push people to do is how can you constantly be analyzing and taking in information and then trying to you know express it in some creative way. So even if it's five minutes a day. Yeah. Just doing it and reminding them. You can do it in a small chunk. You don't have to I think that's really important. Yeah. It doesn't have to turn into a finished product. Yeah. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to be for a specific period of time. Just any small little thing that they can do. Yeah. So sometimes it's a good thing to actually try to treat it like an experiment. I love I think that's scientific all, yeah, process like it's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really fun because it hopefully gets them to think more about exploring than they are producing. And I think right. that's really that's really a fun thing to do. So sometimes if you give yourself parameters, which I guess goes back to the structure, right. give yourself some parameters, then it makes it so that you're not overthinking the process. And it reminds them there are, there are rules or structures right. that you can use that and break. Well, I hope this has been helpful for our yes. future students and I yes. really enjoyed having this conversation. Me Thank too. Yeah. I'll be excited they came to my class with a whole journal full of stuff. I think I that would be, be too. That would be awesome yes. to start the day off that way. So That would be. Yeah.